mayors got to get the job done on the streets of our, our cities. And so we could not tolerate a government shutdown from a city perspective. You know, the federal government um, is dealing with that every other quarter or so. It gives us a little heartburn. We're hopeful that they get through mm -hmm. this one as well. But there are federal agencies that are within the city of Atlanta from TSA to the FAA at the world's busiest airport to, of course, uh, there's some national parks like the King Center is a national park uh, in the city of Atlanta, which is, you know, one of the most visited places in the United States. And so many other things that the federal government, of course, there's federal employees from the IRS to uh, the various mm -hmm. institutions. So a government shutdown by the feds affect our cities across America in a major way. Uh, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll still be able to do what we need to do. But think about all the funding that goes to various households through the federal government. It's just intolerable to see all this wrangling each and every time. For those watching on YouTube and elsewhere right now, clearly the mayor is at home in Atlanta with that beautiful skyline behind you, Mr. Mayor. I didn't mean to confuse that. I know exactly where you're sitting, as a matter of fact. <laughs> We've been talking about dysfunction here in Congress for, I guess, months and months. You're talking about, though, one of the biggest bipartisan victories that we've seen in the Capitol in some time, and that's infrastructure. And you've got your own $750 million infrastructure project that you're talking about in Atlanta. I'd like to hear more about it, beginning with how you're paying for it. Will that be helped by the federal law? Yeah, so we are very thankful for the Biden and, and Harris uh, bipartisan infrastructure law that really brought a lot of dollars to the city of Atlanta and all the cities across this country. Uh, that's been very helpful, as well as the, infrastructure, the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act. We're taking it all to be able to help the residents of Atlanta. We also did our own bond uh, last year, which is the Moving Atlanta Forward Bond, because we have this great credit rating, the highest in the city's history. Uh, so we're capitalizing on that because of being good stewards of our uh, public trust. The public has said, mm -hmm. let's go forward and do all of this new uh, road infrastructure, new parks and uh, recreation centers, new fire stations, as well as a new police station. So we're taking all of this uh, great uh, bond infrastructure that we have and putting it to the to use for the public. So we're now deploying those resources with contractors to get these things built so that the public can enjoy uh -huh. these new amenities. So you're at the contracting stage already. Do you have the workers to do all those jobs? Well, some of this we're at the uh, the uh, you know procurement stage where we are out mm -hmm. there looking for bidders, and you know some are in the design stage so that we can you know properly build it to make sure that it's sustainable. But you know once we are at the contracting stage and some of these, we are open for business in Atlanta, and we want uh, to make sure that the contractors have enough staff. So we're utilizing as many incentives as possible to be able to get them to do that. Uh, we would love to do more workforce development so that individuals can learn these trades to do more construction jobs so they can have middle income wages. That's part of the bipartisan infrastructure law, which was to not only do the construction, but to have uh, workforce development for people to have a skill. And we're, we, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're working on all ends to be able to do that. I'd love to get your view on crime in your city. Mayor Dickens, part of the national conversation, we're hearing a lot about it on the campaign trail now, is about crime in America's cities. Republicans tend to criticize Democrat-run cities. Your office, though, says you've managed to lower homicides by 21 percent in the last year. How'd you do it? Yeah, we are so thankful that last year we reduced homicides by 21 percent, the third highest drop across the nation for cities. Uh, we're very proud of that. We did it through policing and non-policing activities. The policing activities were we went after gangs, guns and and drug dealers. We really cracked down on violent crime in that way. Fifty percent reduction in rapes also, as well as reduction in robberies and burglaries. So we were everywhere with our police force, our great police chief and our partners partners at the GBI, the FBI, our district attorney's office, et cetera. We work together on the policing side, but make no mistake about it. We reduced crime before crime even started by working with our youth. I declared last year the year of the youth. We had kids invested. Uh, we made investments in a midnight basketball where you were able to play basketball from 7 p.m. To, to midnight. And I got out there a few times. Uh, we had the highest summer youth employment <laughs> ever. 
5,000 young people between the ages of 14 and 24 making an average of $17 an hour. They were so busy making money they couldn't be out doing crime or doing any other thing that we wouldn't want them to do. Mm -hmm. So throughout that year, we invested in nonprofits that had a really good hand uh, on our young people to help them with STEM, with robotics, with sports, with dance and arts. So we did everything we could to keep youth busy. We brought down youth crime by 46%. So when you bring down youth violent crime, you bring down overall crime. And we had an overall message through our violence interrupters. We were going out there talking to grown folks, telling them, hey, no retaliation. Let's learn how to de-escalate issues because so much of the crime that we saw was intrapersonal, people that knew each other. So overall, we're thankful. Now when you get 21% homicides, people are thankful about it, but they're like, let's do it again this year and again and again. So we, right. while you say that uh, Republicans point the Democrat-led cities as crime-ridden, we don't see it that way. I work very closely with a Republican governor, and I'm a Democratic mayor, and we work together to bring down violent crime, and, and that's through policing and non-policing efforts. Mm -hmm. As we consider law enforcement, Mr. Mayor, I have to ask you about District Attorney uh, Fonnie Willis, now a household name because of her case against former President Donald Trump. You made a personal appearance uh, in court to support her. Considering the sensitivity in this case, I wonder if you can talk in our remaining couple of minutes about this. Why not turn to someone else who is not shrouded in controversy to lead this case? Well, first of all, if we talk about somebody who's shrouded in controversy, that would be the former president, Donald J. Trump. So when someone says Fani is in some controversy, we've literally watched a president that's been in controversy for most of my entire life and definitely my political life. So I wanted to go to court the other day to say that Fani Willis is actually not on trial. Who is on trial is the former president of the United States who has uh, been accused of trying to steal an election where four people in his orbit, four people that work with him or for him, have been have pled guilty to that in that very same court. And so what we're what I came there to say was Fannie Willis is not on trial. She's standing up here uh, looking, you know, like she's on trial, but she's not. And I didn't want her to feel like she was alone. She needs to continue to do the job that she's doing, uh, which is to mm -hmm. bring prosecution uh, forth uh, on this case, as well as all the other cases. As I mentioned, this is a group project in Atlanta of how we bring down violent crime. Fonnie Willis and the DA's office has been very instrumental in our gang charges and our drug dealing, uh, you know, prosecution of drug dealers, as well as those gun runners and the various people that do harm in our community. We want her to continue to yeah. do that work, take the spotlight off of her for, you know, the things that she's been accused of and the things that are, are personal, her personal life. You know, she can manage that and others can help her manage that. For me, I need a DA that's going to help bring down violent crime and make sure we have trusted elections in America.